Begin the journey, navigating the road to cyber resiliency. Next stop, Cyber Resiliency Summit. Hello, welcome to Navigating the Road to Cyber Resiliency, the summit made possible by Dell Technologies. I'm Dave Vellante with John Furrier. Rob Strecce is here, as is Shelley Kramer, and we're live in our Palo Alto studios to discuss the changing threat landscape and how you can best adapt to the unpredictable nature of ongoing cyber threats. John, it's great to be here with you. This is our seventh Super Studio event this yep. year when you include the four super clouds we did. I mean, I love this format. Ransomware is booming, Dave. It's going to be a great, great topic. Yeah, so, you know, you and I were uh, at the, the, the MGM property, it was the Cosmopolitan earlier this year in June, it, right? The MGM was, when you drove in, it was, you know, usually it's all green, it was black because they had the ransomware attack, they had that hit, all the lights were out, it was kind of eerie, but it's a pretty serious situation for customers. I mean, a quota chain analytics over three billion is extorted in crypto, MGM, other high profile attacks, Clorox, you got a huge amount of names, Del Monte, US Marshall, and many more hit the mainstream media. Every day, ransomware is putting the fear into every single enterprise, public sector, EDU, all aspects, every vertical is under threat with ransomware. That's just the beginning. More and more cybersecurity are playing more, uh, more offense with generative AI. You're seeing a lot more activity with cyber. And this road that we're going down is going to be pretty dynamic but there's solutions and we're going to get into that. And Caesars paid the ransom, you know, MGM didn't, and I think it was more disruptive, it cost them more. You know, a lot of companies, they, they pay the ransom, crypto, like you said, is, is, is sort of enabled them to do that. But John, these examples represent only a small piece of the true cost of cyber attacks. There's a, there's a, a publication called Cybercrime Magazine, they do a really good job here. They say when you include factors like destruction of data, lost productivity, IP theft, I mean, if, also, John, if you think about the impact on your market value if you're a public company, fraud, the overall market impact of cyber, be $3 trillion of cyber attacks in, in 2023, and that's growing in the double digits annually. So, I mean, look, the IT market, John, yeah. is $4 trillion in spending. Yeah. And we're talking about $3 trillion in economic impact of cyber attacks. It's actually absolutely enormous. It's changing the game on how people are reacting to it, but also being proactive. You're starting to see this uh, pay, not pay. You're starting to see lines forming between the good guys and the bad guys. And again, like I said, we've been saying on theCUBE, generative AI is offering a better opportunity now for enterprises not to play just defense, but actually play offense and be proactive. So, you know, certainly there's a huge TAM for the criminals and that's what they're tapping into. It's, a, it's its own industry. We've been covering that on theCUBE but this is a real market and the solutions are evolving. And again, I'm really optimistic. We're seeing now lines of sight of new solutions going down this road of uh, cyber resilience. I'm telling you, it's going to be a different ball game, but again, this game is still the same. Bad guys are trying to get the money and the data is the money, <laughs> you know, protect the cheddar as they say. So, you know, that's the, that is the key and it is a huge market. Well, in, in terms of paying or, or not paying, it seems like a lot of companies are paying. So you know, sometimes when you pay, you, you don't really get everything back. Uh, we had Nature's uh, Fresh uh, Farm on early, earlier, they did, you know, in episode one. They didn't pay, they didn't have to pay because they were able to recover, so that's pretty important. You know, others have said they've actually paid the ransom and they got their data back. Others have, have paid the ransom, didn't get their data back. We heard earlier, and I think it was episode one, it's actually illegal to pay ransom to, to, to actors in North Korea and, you know, and, and, and other nation states. So it's a pretty ticky, uh, sticky situation for well, customers. Well, I mean, the, the, there's also other factors like reputational harm is a big deal. So you have the, the, the businesses, one, the financial risk is huge, but the reputational harm on trust and as apps are becoming, again, the user experience changing with the new apps emerging in the modern era with cloud and now distributed computing with the edge, you're seeing a lot more devices having data, you're seeing a lot more distributed computing paradigms, you sovereign cloud in, the, in Europe. Enterprises have to re-architect what they're doing. And again, doing it at the pace of play of cyber, again, it's fast. And so, you know, the, the solutions are evolving to that. And we're going to cover that a lot on this, uh, this I, event. I, I think to that point too, it's not binary. It's not like, okay, I'm not protected. Now all of a sudden I'm protected. It is a journey. And that's why we chose this theme of, you know, navigating the journey because it's a progressive journey. You know, you don't, you don't just solve this problem overnight and you can't completely solve this problem. So, you know, it, it, and this is why we, we are doing this summit with the help of Dell Technologies and yeah. really putting together a, sort of an episodic journey to cyber resiliency. Well, the name is awesome. Navigating the road to cyber resilience is a great name, but you know, if you zoom out and you think navigating, 
part of navigating is discovery. And one of the things we're going to unpack in this event is people are trying to discover what's the best solution for their environment. This idea of general purpose stuff is kind of moving away. The environments are certainly going to be tailored and customized for each other. So the discovery aspect of solutions with new tech stacks evolving, uh, you're starting to see um, the whole cloud chips Again, distributed computing coming. So there's a lot of discovery. People are, are interested in learning about what is the impact for AI, threats to critical infrastructure, changing landscape, rise in nation state activity, increased sophistication of cyber criminals, public private partnerships, and then how to take an ecosystem approach for attacking the problem. These are the key areas we're going to cover on this as we discover the concepts needed to navigate the road to cyber zone. So discovery and navigation kind of go head to head. Why would you drive a car without without uh, without uh, Waze or Google Maps? You want to have that. You want to have that information. So we're going to unpack it all. Well, in this summer, you, as John said, you're going to hear from experts in the field, technologists, practitioners. We have CISOs coming on, industry analysts. So how you can build a more resilient organization by both stopping more breaches and responding more quickly to to cyber attacks, and, and ransomware with with greater confidence. So as John just said. You know, we're going to look at the impact of AI that's obviously front and center these days. It's not just, you know, the AI that we've been talking about for 10 years, it's obviously Gen AI as well. What are those use cases for Gen AI? Sometimes they're not so, so obvious. You know, threats to critical infrastructure, John. We've been talking um, for quite a while now about this book written by Mark E. Sorensen on a restaurant in Jaffa, and it's all about how fragile this critical infrastructure is. I mean, talk about, you know, that, those numbers of $3 trillion in cyber attacks, when you start to think about, you know, oil rigs and other critical infrastructure and the electric grid, actually that can add up pretty quickly. The, the IOT, the industrial IOT and those markets are under massive transformation. Again, Gen AI gives them a lift, but so you're seeing a, a changeover, but that increases the surface area, Dave, for the, for the potential bad guys. So as the transformation happens, that road um, is needed because they're going to be modernizing their infrastructure. So you're seeing the edge being a big deal, especially the industrial side, whether it's manufacturing or critical infrastructure, a lot of activities going on there as OT and IT fully merge. And then we got generative AI data at the edge. All of this is happening. So this is going to be probably the next three years of solid um, uh, content we're going to be covering as that edge explodes. And you, say, you already saw that at all the big conferences, the, the, the vertical industries are the ones that are getting a lot of lift with, uh, with the new AI tech stacks. And then, you know, this notion of the rise in nation state activity and the increased sophistication of cyber criminals. One of our guests at this summit is Wendy Whitmore. She leads the Unit 42 division of Palo Alto Network. So that's their threat intelligence unit. It's one of the most advanced in the world. We're going to hear a lot about public and private partnerships. Herb Kelsey's coming on. And he's got a lot of experience, as do many of other, other guests inside of government and in, in public sector companies, as well as commercial companies. So that public-private partnerships, you know, John, sometimes I feel like the government is finger wagging, but the truth is inside the government, you have some of the smartest people in the world on this topic, and they really are out to do good. I think this event represents, again, discovering the data, navigating the road is going to be critical. But if you look at the lineup, we have a, a great, breadth of industry participation, not just Dell Technologies, but ecosystems, because this is going to be a team sport. When you look at the cyber security market, there's threat detection, data protection, working together, they're going to balance out and you're going to start to see some harmony. We're, we're going to predict on theCUBE that you're going to start to see a lot more public-private partnerships, but also partners in the ecosystem. You know, I think there's going to be an ecosystem data play. And again, this is we're going to try to discover these concepts. So you're going to see a lot more of this kind of broad, industry conversation where the leaders are stepping up and sharing their, their solutions. And again, you see APIs connecting things. So again, multi-vendor participation, multi-industry leadership here at, the, at this event. I think that ecosystem approach is critical. We're going to hear from partners like global you know, system integrators or even regional system integrators that are, that are actually helping solve this problem. And as earlier I was saying, it's, a, it's a, at least a two part you know, equation. Stopping the breach, which is, you can't stop all the breaches. And that's where like a partnership like CrowdStrike comes in. We're going to hear uh, from, 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 from those guys. And that's really their whole mantra, stop the breach. But, then they, but you know they're going to get through. So you have to have 
a recovery mechanism, and that's where data protection and backup and recovery come in. So that ecosystem approach is critical, and we're really going to get into I that. Can't, I can't help but love the road to the road metaphor. Is there self-driving uh, data protection day coming soon? Or? Yeah, well, yeah. You, with AI, <laughs> for sure, there's more and more automation. In fact, that you have to have more and more automation because you know why, John? The bad guys are automating. Yeah. You know, they're advanced. I mean, they're really leaning into AI and, and automation, and so you've got to respond. And you know, we've talked about this before in various we super. Did a poll. You did a poll on on. You did a poll on this. Uh, yeah, on your breaking analysis. That's right, and I think initially the the the, the feeling was that initially the bad guys had the advantage with Gen AI, right? Initially out of the gate, because why? Because they can write better phishing, you know, <laughs> emails. But over time, the technologist, the, the, the technology vendor community ultimately is going to have, you know, the ability to, to respond because they own the tech. Yeah, and then they're faster too. They, they have no downside to get into the game. They can just go right in there and start just deploying stuff, reuse it. A lot of great, lot of great uh, content coming out. I'm looking forward to this event. Yeah, okay, first up is John Shimoni. I sat down with him recently. He's the Chief Security Officer at Dell Technologies. He's got a varied background, as, as I was saying earlier. He's, a, he's an individual who's worked in public sector. He's worked in commercial enterprises. He worked in private equity. And he was at the heart of the Sony hack, John, earlier yeah. uh, last decade. And he's going to talk about lessons learned, what's new, what's changed, what hasn't changed, the Im impact of Gen AI. As John said, we have a ton of really exciting content today at this summit from experts in the field. So stay with us. First up, John Shimoni.